Hello and welcome to pmclounge.com. In this video, let's talk about the five popular misconceptions about Sprint. Now, if you have clicked this video just because of this cute little child and you don't even know what Sprint is, let me guide you to the first link in the description below, which is an entire playlist of every single agile related video that we have done so far. So if you are preparing for your PMP exam, that playlist is where you should uh, go and that playlist is what you should use to understand every single concept about related to agile uh, for your PMP exam. Now, one other thing here uh, before we move on is uh, to understand why do we have these misconceptions to begin with. Uh, one of the biggest reason for that is the fact that the scrum guide does not exactly give you directions or instructions as to how you should run your sprints or how you should run your scrum team, right? Uh, what it does is it provides a framework of sorts. And because of this, because of this incompleteness, if I may use that word, incompleteness of the scrum guide, uh, the scrum practitioners have created certain rules of their own, which do not necessarily fit or do not necessarily exist when we talk about the scrum framework as such now sprint something quick about sprint that you need to know is that the maximum duration of a sprint that is defined in the scrum guide is one month so in one month the scrum team is supposed to deliver some value and the sprint is supposed to end if they are going for a one month long sprint now with that being clear that being said Let's get started and look at the five popular misconceptions about a sprint. Misconception number one is to cancel the sprint if you are not going to meet the sprint goal. So every sprint has a sprint goal. And if you think that the team cannot meet that goal, should you just cancel that sprint? Uh, does it sound justifiable enough? See, the thing is, if you have a sprint goal and that goal hasn't changed, you know, you haven't discovered any further information that changes the sprint goal itself. If the goal remains the same and let's say you were doing a two week sprint. So towards the end of week one, the scrum team realizes that they will not be able to meet the sprint goal. Although the goal hasn't changed, the goal remains the same, but the team uh, it's it's obvious that the team is not going to meet the sprint goal then should the sprint be cancelled the answer is absolutely no actually there are certain situations by the way where you can uh, cancel the sprint and i've done a video on this in the past i'll share a link the second link in the description that you can check it out check it out uh, we talk about certain situations where you can actually cancel the sprint but in this situation you should not be cancelling the sprint uh, there are urgent issues uh, of course which is what i've discussed in that video the second link in the description because of which you can actually cancel the sprint but when it comes to not meeting the sprint goal uh, it could be because of several reasons right uh, there could be some infrastructure issues uh, your testing team is not able to get the infrastructure that they need to test right so that could be an issue it is possible that uh, there was a you were working on a two week sprint and towards the end of week one you realized that uh, the scrum team has underestimated the amount of work that they need to do in this sprint so the amount of work is something that they cannot actually meet by the end of the sprint but these are not issues because of which you are going to cancel your sprint right it is also possible that you look at the product backlog items that you have taken in your sprint backlog and you realize that these items were not cut small enough to be delivered in a sprint so that is also possible but all these issues are not issues because of which you should be canceling your sprint in fact let's say you have a two week sprint right and by the end of week one it is obvious that uh, the sprint uh, goal will not be met well then the team can actually make use of the daily scrum and try to adapt as to what they can deliver what is the value that they can deliver and if it is still possible to meet this uh, the sprint goal also, if it is not possible at all, later in the sprint retrospective, 
the team can get together and they can figure out what actually went wrong. So you should not be canceling your sprint and starting off a fresh sprint with a new goal. Let's not do that. Instead, let's stick to that goal. Let's try to see if there are ways you can still meet that goal. If there are no way, if there is no way that you can meet that sprint goal, then you should actually go over uh, this entire uh, situation that has happened. You should go over this in the sprint retrospective. So you should use this opportunity to learn about what went wrong instead of canceling the sprint and then, you know, uh, creating a newer sprint. Scrum teams can take a break between sprints. This is a misconception. The scrum team is not supposed to take any break between sprints. Now, of course, the scrum team members, they are not robots. They cannot work 24 seven, right? But the fact is the scrum team members are masters when it comes to balancing their work and life. If your scrum team is doing overtime every single day during the course of the entire sprint, then there is something wrong in the way you as a scrum master or a product owner is running the sprint. That is not how sprints are supposed to work. So when it comes to taking a break between sprints, that is definitely not something that uh, the scrum team does because they will be out of work if they take a break and there's no sprint, right? The fact is you can reduce the scope of a sprint. Let's say you're working towards the end of the year, right? And a lot of people will be out. So it is possible to reduce the scope. It is possible to see what all items, uh, what is the minimum value that can be delivered when it comes to the sprint backlog or the items that you take in the sprint backlog, right? That is something definitely possible, but there is no break between sprints as far as uh, Scrum is concerned. I'd like to remind you PMC Lounge is now on Skillshare. Head over to Skillshare.com slash PMC Lounge for exclusive trainings. Misconception number three is that a sprint cannot be shorter than one week. This is a classic misconception. If you work in an agile environment, uh, I would want you to tomorrow ask your scrum team members uh, whether it is okay to have a sprint which is shorter than one week. I'm not telling you to have a sprint which is shorter than one week might not be possible in the environment that you work in, but I would just want you to ask them based on their knowledge of Scrum, if it is even okay to have a sprint uh, that is shorter than one week. And I can guarantee you a lot of people are going to say that you cannot have a sprint which is shorter than one week. The fact is, I said this in the beginning itself that the maximum duration uh, that is defined in the scrum guide for a sprint is one month, but there's no minimum duration defined. There is no time box of minimum duration defined for a sprint in the scrum guide. What that means is it is the scrum team's call whether they want to do a two week sprint a four week sprint, call it 14 days, call it 10 working days, whatever that you want to call it. It is the scrum team's call to uh, create uh, the time box for the sprint. Now, let me give you an example. If you follow any news websites, let's say, right? So if you follow a news website, how many times is that website updated every day? How many times are the changes actually being pushed in production in a single day on a news website and is that can that be called a sprint or only larger changes that happens on the website let's say a, a change of the entire website layout only that is something which is in scope of a sprint what do you think let me know in the comments actually i'd love to know your uh, perspective on this Number four, longer sprints can reduce the risk. This is a misconception that is right out of waterfall methodology, right? Actually, the opposite of this is totally true. If you work in an environment where requirements are changing way too often, then it would actually be better to deliver frequently and seek feedback. So longer sprints, 
cannot reduce risk. In fact, shorter sprints can definitely reduce risk in a high risk environment. Sprint as such should be as long as they are required to be to deliver a valuable increment. So if you're delivering one bug fix in one day and you call that a sprint, you are not necessarily delivering enough value, right? So that is also something that you need to consider. Don't have a one day long sprint and just deliver one bug fix. Sprints should be as long enough uh, as required to deliver some kind of value. But when in doubt, always go for shorter sprints. Number five is a release is same as a sprint. And we have actually talked about this in one of our past videos. Third link in the description will be a direct link to that video. Uh, because if you remember, the second link was going to be about when you can actually cancel a sprint. So check out the third link if you want to understand in detail what is the difference between a release planning and a sprint planning but for this video i'd like to let you know that a release is definitely not same as a sprint when you complete a sprint right you have certain incremental value that has been created by the scrum team and that value is actually releasable but it is not necessarily released. It is not necessarily deployed in production or goes live every time a sprint ends. And there could be several reasons for this, right? Uh, there could be upcoming marketing event where your uh, product owner wants to deliver a release that is worth the work of five sprints or six sprints. So that is also possible because he want, he or she wants to make a splash at that marketing event with the kind of features you are delivering. So that is possible. Uh, it is also possible that uh, there is some security requirement. There is a security disclosure on a certain date and you cannot go live. You cannot push your sprint uh, deliverable live before that date. So the sprint the sprint has ended uh, the deliverable is ready but you don't deliver it it is not released unless uh, you are uh, you've reached that date right so uh, those are some of the reasons why a sprint although at the end of the sprint you obviously have a releasable product you obviously have something of incremental value but it is not necessary to have a release at the end of each sprint so that's all that I had in this video. I hope you got value out of it. Let me know how many of these misconceptions were you aware of and were actually following in your real life projects. Like, share, subscribe, check out our website pmclounge.com and if you like our work, consider contributing at pmclounge.com contribute. Thank you.